Now, when when the opportunity with WWE goes away, you get your release. Uh, I mean, are you feeling like, okay, well, my career is over, or are you still pretty optimistic? Like, okay, I can still go and do more. Um, I was ang- I was I was stupefied then angry because I thought like I was on such a PG version of WWE at the time. Like there wasn't the Attitude Era, it wasn't the glorious eighties, it wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't now. It was a super ultra PG. And I just thought the gloves are fucking off. I'm going to do what I want. I had, again, I had, Jake was always the, the devil and the angel on my shoulders. Like I, I don't have, I don't have edge sitting there. I have edge more, you know, more sometimes when it comes to, you know, I'm paying my bills and just, you know, being the, the responsible kind of guy. But when it comes to passionate stuff, like Jake's both angel and devil on my shoulders. And he was just like, do what you fucking want scare the world, make everybody afraid of, of what you have in your brain. You know, I'm not, I'm not a big guy, but I'm not a small guy either. And Jake was always like, you know, you can be a Raptor or you can be a T-Rex depending on who you're in the ring with, but you're smart. And he goes, and if nobody knows how to book you, that's, that's their problem. And, and I remember the, the biggest compliment I ever got in this world was Jake said, I was the most creative guy I ever met. And without yes. being more to me than any, any championship belt, any, anything, and I just looked at him. And I remember saying, "I think that's code for that. I'm going to die poor." And he goes, "Yep." <laughs> <laughs> Even my dog agrees. 